Hello everybody, it's uh, the Epping Motor Company here and today we're going to do a quick walk around and video of our 1967 Lotsalan S3 with the Spider conversion done on it. Um, obviously in the current uh, coronavirus situation it's not easy for people to come and see cars. So I'm going to have a quick look around it and point out the various faults and flaws on the car uh, and tell you a little bit about it. it it's a 1967. The car was um, owned by a personal acquaintance of ours. Um, my brother went to school with his son. We've known the family for probably about 45, 50 years. Um, he purchased the car in 1979 as a car uh, that he wanted to do some refurbishing on because he wanted to completely personalise the car from front to back and bring it up to his personal specification. Um, obviously it started out as a fixed head coupe um, in the course of restoration he bought the spider conversion kit from from spider who do the chassis as well and obviously that kit allows you to convert your car to a full convertible which you can't distinguish from a drop head coupe it comes with the correct rear trim pieces Correct, correct windscreen fittings, correct hood, correct frame. So unless you're an absolute Lotus uh, fanatic or specialist, you can't tell from looking at the car that it's not an original drop head coupe. Um, we start walking around the car, I'll do some close-ups in a minute so you can see any flaws on the paintwork. Um, he bought the car in 1979 and started restoration and upgrades on it in uh, in around 81, 82. Um, the car had a, a bare fiberglass repaint. It was originally orange, and the colour he chose was 19 about a 67, 68 Ford Monaco red, or Monaco red, which was his favourite colour at the time. Um, the car was repainted in 1992 so the paintwork on this car is 38 years old so there are there are some uh, shrinkage marks in places on it and some chips and minor stress cracks which you would expect on a fiberglass car that was painted 38 years ago after all they had stress cracks within a year or two of them leaving the factory um, he had the he had various modifications carried out to the car. He bought a brand new galvanised Spider chassis. I won't remember to remember all the spec on it, but he had the wheel arches and the rear wing profiles redesigned to his specification so that he could fit uh, slightly wider wheels and tyres on than standard to improve the handling and the looks of the car because the original wheels were very, very skinny. Now, these were... He bought five brand new Wolf Race for the car size they're six inch wide so they're six j by 13s as you can see the wheels are well the wheels are i think he bought in the 1980s so they're 40 odd years old and they're still like brand new car has what looked like um, perfect pirelli p6 tires on um the treads virtually untouched on them there's no cracking on the tires at all so it has been professionally you know he's kept it carefully stored so the tires have kept in perfect condition um, at the time of purchasing the car I think it had done 64,000 miles in 1979 um, which was confirmed to him as being the correct mileage that sounds correct because in 89 it would have been uh, see 67 yeah it's probably carried about um sorry 79 he bought it 79 so it was 12 years old the car so 64,000 miles is about 5,000 miles a year so that sounds correct um for an land of this age and obviously since the rest the restoration work he basically took 20 odd years he started about 81 82 and gradually refurbished the car um completed it in I think 2001, 2002 which was when it was MOT'd again. It's only covered about 5,000 miles since the full restoration was done. Um, the, as I said the car had a brand new Spider chassis, it's had all the upgrades and improvements made to the brakes and suspension, it's got adjustable shock absorbers, um, 
what else can I tell you about it? Um, yeah, he bought he bought and we have all the bills for this in, in 1982. He bought a G3 spec vegan tune engine for it, which vegan tune claim is 150 brake horsepower. Um, I would imagine that's at the flywheel. Knowing vegan tune, that's probably an estimated brake horsepower, but it's certainly got considerably more power than uh, standard 67 Elan with a twin. A Stromberg or SU carburettors on which I think will probably rate it at about 90 about 95 brake horsepower so this will probably have between 140 and 150 um, I've no idea if he supplied the engine to vegan tune or bought one of their exchange units off them I don't think it's the original engine number that's showing on the logbook from when the car was new so I would imagine that he supplied them with a suitable engine which was built to G3 spec but we've got all the bills for that uh, Vegan Tune also rebuilt the gearbox at the same time it's had new crown wheel and pinion fitted at the same time stainless steel exhaust system we'll have a look around the other wheels obviously they're held on with the uh, knockoff spinners there is a fifth one in the, in the, uh, in the boot of the same size but they're all in pretty perfect condition. Now, regards to the bodywork and panel work, um, as I said, he had the rear wheel arches and wings reprofiled by a fiberglass specialist, and the same done to the front wheel arches. So, if you want a totally standard original car with the narrow wheels on, this car isn't for you. Um, the same fiberglass people removed. The roof and did the full spider conversion. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, the hood's in perfect condition. I haven't actually got the hood properly fitted at the moment, but it's all original Lotus equipment for the hood and frame and for the rear deck area where the hood fits. Now, if we start walking around the car, I'll see if I can pick out various flaws and marks which we either haven't touched up with or didn't merit doing. Uh, the left-hand rear wheel arch, I can see a mark on here, but I think this is going to polish out. This just looks like a, a mark in the paint that's T-cut. Um, there is the odd, whether or not they'll show up on, uh, on video remains to be seen. It's not always easy to tell. There's a blemish in the paint. There's a blemish in the paint here. looks like a chip of some sort. I think you'll probably better see that line in the paint. Um, rest of the rear left-hand wing looks fine. Boot lid looks fine. No damage on it. So there's a slight stress crack here on the rear deck. The usual tiny stress cracks that you get round the hinges because it's screwed through fiberglass uh, there is one mark on the boot lid here another stress mark here rear panels dirty but looks nice haven't cleaned that yet in fact we haven't cleaned the car at all yet <coughs> excuse me there's a chip on the rear bumper here that needs touching in that's got to be done Let's carry on walking around the car. <coughs> the panel fits pretty good on it for one of these. The Lotus had a lot of problems with their moulds, with some of their moulds in 67, which means the, that the uh, bottom rear end of the doors kicks out slightly on them. There's nothing you can do about it. They actually had a batch of uh, body moulds that were faulty at the factory. <laughs> Being Lotus, they didn't bother correcting them. They just shrugged their shoulders and said it was part of the character. But the rest of the door fits nice. Um, <coughs> excuse me, walk around the car um, let's have a look at the scuttle panel you can see a little stress mark there or shrinkage mark in front of the wiper mount it's got the correct chrome wipers on the car looking over the bonnet I'll try and show any stress marks I can find and uh, Cracks. This is normal for a fiberglass car this age, especially when it was painted 38 years ago. And you never know what they've done with the shrinkage under, you know, with the preparation of primer underneath. I think you can probably see that as a mark there. The left-hand front wing and headlight headlamp pod are virtually flawless. There's a tiny stress crack on the corner here. 
See if I'm getting it to focus in. Easier said than done. Sometimes trying to get them to focus. So it's the lights a bit funny today. Moving around, the front bumper's absolutely fine on the car. Spoilers all in lovely condition underneath. No damage or cracks on it. Managed to get it to focus now. Now the front right hand side of the car does have some shrinkage marks on it. There's some in front of the bonnet there which you can probably, uh, I think you can probably see those. Let me point them out. A little bit here as well. There's a little bit of shrinkage on the edge of the headlights here. Um, some marks on the headlight and some shrinkage marks on here behind the wing. I suspect this is where the paint has shrunk in 38 years, possibly exposure to uh, sun at some stage. I mean the paint's not gone pink at all, it's held its colour perfectly so there's no real issues with the paint. Front right hand wing's fine. A small chip here behind the bonnet. Probably when someone's closed the bonnet. And again, the right hand door is fitting pretty good. It's just that slight kick out that they had on the moulds at the bottom, which you can't really do anything about without rebuilding the door from scratch because uh, it's just simply a fault with the moulding on the fiberglass. Let's have a quick look in the boot now. battery in the boot of course <coughs> there's the there's a full size spare wheel I'm just going to pull it out a minute and have a look and see if there's anything else in here because I can't remember can't remember what's under the uh, boot area ah you can see it's got an aluminium or stainless steel fuel tank in there let's lift this up and see I can lift this up. Okay, can't lift that panel out at the moment. Uh, can't actually see what's in there. I don't know if there's a jack or anything in there because someone screwed it down at the back. So I'll have to get a, a screw to remove that. Sorry, and have a proper look. But at least we can see it's got an aluminium or stainless steel fuel tank in it. Uh, you can see the original colour here where the black is painted has cracked slightly inside the uh, on the paint that was applied inside the boot lid you can see small areas of the original orange let's put the spare wheel back in we'll have a look at that panel later i don't know if it's got a jack or hammer with it but if not we'll uh, and spanner will su will supply one won't be a problem to get hold of one Right, let's have a look inside the car now and have a look at the door panels. Door panels are... Right hand door panel or door card is, uh, is perfect, looks original to me. Carpets are immaculate on the car, probably all replaced. Paint is reasonably good on the door shut. A little bit of cracking there on the edges which is normal wear from stress cracks while you're slamming the door closed. Um, seats are in pristine condition and I think you can see if you look in the back there that the soft top area looks correct as it should have done from Lotus and there's a fire extinguisher in here as well. It's got the standard four speed Lotus box which I said was rebuilt by Vegan Tune. Uh, mount the uh, leather rimmed aluminium steering wheel to give it a little bit more room the seats do slide backwards and forwards on the car uh, it had the old style wooden dash in it I don't know if it's made from beech or ash but during the restoration he had a new uh, full walnut dash fitted which I'll show from the other side door card is immaculate on this side as well I've noticed one tiny, tiny little nick right down the bottom, and these could be the original door cards, which means they're you know over 50 years old. I would imagine that's been caused by the belt buckle being in the hanging in the door when it was closed. 
that's a common occurrence uh, on all cars of all ages. Um, again, there's some slight, slight cracking if you can see that. That's where the door rubs when it closes, that, that bit there. Slight cracking in the door shut. That's normally just the stress of having the door closed on them tends to cause them to crack. Walnut dashboard, which is absolutely beautiful. It was obviously all new on the car. Let's have a look at the soft top condition on it. You can see it's got a yellow towel on there to protect it from uh, rubbing on the inside of the roof. The rear window's crystal clear because obviously the soft top was all renewed at the time. Seats in excellent condition. Still in perfect condition. Right, let me open the bonnet. Let's see if we can get the bonnet open now. Right, okay, that's the bonnet popped up now. If you can see that. Original dashboard, I see it's got a couple of marks there on the top of the dash, slight cracks in it, that's not been changed, that's original from 1967, interior light works, got a more modern CD stereo fitted, uh, if it had a radio originally it would have been an awful push button thing but you can always put that back to original should you wish to. So that on the glove box, I think it's just got uh, a cloth in there see the quality of the wood that was used for the dashboard. Right, let's jump out and have a look in the under the bonnet. I'm glad it's not windy today, so at least you can hear me, or hopefully you can hear me. Now the engine is a typical light metallic blue that uh, Vegan Tune used. As you can see it's got a tubular in oh, you I think you can see it's got a tubular exhaust manifold on it. This one's fitted with a Kenlow electric fan which comes on automatically at the correct temperature so it keeps it at around 90 degrees. Original Lotus chassis plate on there as far as I know, it doesn't look as if it's been changed at all. Dynamo. As I said the car's only done about 5,000 miles five or six thousand miles since the rebuild was done which took him over 20 years in his spare time so let's walk around the other side and have a look in the engine compartment it's got twin uh, twin side draft webbers rather than delortos on it and obviously instead of the small single choke strombergs or su's Underneath the bonnet all looks in good condition. You've got the normal chips and marks you get on them where they close down and tend to catch. Let's just leave that to sit like that for the minute and we'll fire her up. Let me hop in the car. Right, <laughs> mileage as of today is 70,539. You can see that I have had the car out for a run. It's currently reading 70 degrees. Let's see if we can find the right key. Right, just one pump of the throttle should be enough. As you can see, no oil pressure at the moment. Starting up instantly goes to uh, 60 pounds oil pressure and it holds above 40 tick over when it's hot. I'm hoping you can hear that. As I said it runs at about 90 degrees, the fan kicks in at 90 and it holds its temperature well. Fine. 
this one's been fitted with electric windows they work with uh, they work with uh, flipper switches to match the uh, others on the car on the dashboard it's got these um, like sprung loaded switches that show the drivers one running Sorry about the difficulty of doing a video with one hand. Not sure if I know how the lights work on this. Let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, so I've just turned the lights on, they popped up instantly, look. And they don't sit at some funny level, so there's no vacuum problems. Car's absolutely beautiful inside. Very nice for the age. Obviously, any work that was needed doing was doing. I know all the indicators are working on it because I've just been out in it. It has run out of MOT now, but it would still have a new MOT coming. Again for you. Right, let's hop out. Not used to film, as I said, jumping in and out of a low sports car like this. So that's a, that's a that's a basically a quick walk around and look at the car. Um, Try to show all the faults and flaws on the paint. It's not a concourse car, but it is a nice car. It was thoroughly sorted. All the brakes were upgraded. All the suspension was new, all chromed. I've got plenty of pictures of the rolling chassis, which I'll uh, show when I go inside for anybody who's interested in seeing those and the history folder. Okay, so to continue, I'm just going to show a few of the photographs of the Lotus. There's another pile of photographs there, but this is to show some of the work that was done in restoration. That was the original dashboard. It's the walnut dashboard now fitted. Engine after it was delivered from Vegan Tune. the car when shortly after he got in it was being stripped still a fixed head coupe there stripped with the engine out literally hundreds of pictures and then we've got a history folder going back to 1979. Give you some idea of the thickness of it. Colours Monaco red. That's some of the spec on the car. As you can see, it says non-lotus seats. It hasn't got the original seats in, but they look like a period bucket seat, and they do slide. Bill for the wolf race wheels. Bill for the spider chassis. Drive shaft kit. We have a solid drive shaft. 
Lewis Bills of Spider in 1983-84. Stub axles. It goes on and on. <coughs> New pedal box assembly doing the fitting the spider conversion and the repaint that was in 92 actually I probably missed it back here but there was a bill for I think there was a bill from vegan tune here somewhere all oh, done with it Yeah, oh, there it is. Built a vegan tune for the uh, G3 engine. Clutch assembly. Rebuilding gearbox. Etc, etc. I'm going to go through all the bills. There's literally dozens and dozens of bills here. Rear spring conversion. Well, I'm not going to run through every bills. There's too many of them. But anyway, just gives you an idea of the amount of history there is. Bills with a car. Now, what's of interest? Which is of relevance, relevance when I get to it. If I can get to the MOTs. Oh my god, there's just too many bills here. Right, the first MOT we have with the car was 1979, which is when he bought it roughly. 64,608 miles, that was when he bought the car in 1979, so it was 12 years old, so I said in the video earlier, that's roughly 5,000 miles a year, so the mileage he was told was correct, and I'm sure it is. And the next MOT, after he'd finished restoring it, got it back on the road, is in 2002, so effectively he was working on the car for, well, so roughly 1980 so over 20 years and that's 64,624 miles so literally as you can see like 12 miles uh, 12, 14, 16 miles later and then of course the other MOTs from then just carry on showing relatively little usage but all the, all the miles up to the most recent one which was October it expired in October last year. So I'm not going to show all the MOTs. You can see how little it was used. And the most recent one, which is now expired, 70,387. Got an old blue style logbook. Showing four owners, but it shows a previous keeper of having bought it in 1967. It just goes to show how useless the DVLA records are. Anyway, showing four owners previous to Mr. Bernand. There's an HPI check on the car. No accident damage. Had his private plate on it at one stage. And that is the history folder on the Lotus. Lovely paperwork for anyone who's interested. As I said, it won't suit someone who's a stickler for an originality. If you want an original, untouched, as it left the factory, drop head coupe, it's not for you. If you want a thoroughly sorted, really great performing, great looking car with lots of modifications and upgrades, then um, 
this might be for you. Anyway, thank you for watching. Sorry, it's been a bit shaky. I've been hold, hold, trying to hold a big tablet with one hand. It's uh, Epping Motor Company out for now. Please remember to like the video. You're welcome to share it with anyone who you think might be interested. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see future videos. And if you hit the bell, you will be updated about upcoming videos. Thanks very much. Catch up with you all in the next video.